Well, good afternoon and welcome to, uh, on behalf of the Governor's Park Committee, I, I just want to welcome you to this special event today, noting some real history of our community, Castleton. And a tradition was started several years ago to make a real visible and long-standing reminder by the park benches and planting a tree of really an amazing statistic that Castleton has experienced in five governors coming from this small community. No one else has that honor or recognition. So we're pleased you're coming here today to help us celebrate that, that occasion. Also, uh, when Mr. Castleton, Kenny Hobbiger asked me to MC this, I certainly said, of course. And then I had to listen to quite a bit of history of the park here. And so I thought I'd just take a couple of seconds to relay some of that history. You know, 20 plus years ago, this spot here was in really in disrepair. It was very low, water would run in and stay here. It was a lot of weeds, very much unkept. There was a long fence that went back along the, uh, we'll wait till the train goes by, all right? The railroad is well and alive in North Dakota. But that fence that was back there needed to come down and be repaired. And I'll finish the story in just a minute. Well, maybe they're taking their time, finally agreeing with the speed limit that there is to come through town. But when the, when the city fathers saw the, the shape the park was really in, they decided to uh, discuss whether or not it should be a parking lot. And they had a good discussion about that. But the informal leaders came forward and said, not a good plan. Even though it was a good discussion and the city businesses on that side of the street certainly needed the parking space. But those informal leaders said, we will put the sweat equity in to make this a park that we can all enjoy and appreciate. We've got both ends coming. I think we'll keep going. But those informal leaders said, we will put the sweat equity into this park to make it and start the process of what you see today. It took a lot of volunteer hours, a lot of dirt, and a lot of sweat to make it and put it the way it is today. So we can thank those informal leaders of our community that helps continue the visible and long-standing tribute that we have to the governors that have come from Castleton here. So again, we're glad that you're here. Thank you for coming to help participate and celebrate this significant occasion in the history of Castleton. I also want to just recognize the color guard here today we appreciate you being here very much, as well as the flag. It's always good to see the flag flying as it's our sign and symbol of freedom, especially as we think of tomorrow and what happened there 10 years ago. I hope that all of you will consider flying your own flags tomorrow in memory of that terrible day. With that, Pastor Rick Cargard from the Presbyterian Church in Fargo will begin with an invocation. Let's bow in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for Castleton and for the five governors that have called this place home. We pray you will be with us as we celebrate the fifth governor's bench in honor of the present governor, Jack Dalrymple. Please bless his service. Bless this time together and bless the food that we eat in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Next, we're gonna hear from a man that probably has sung at just about every event that we have in our community. I've seen David Piper sing on YouTube I think they call them the pipes on that particular clip that's on there. Certainly fitting for that beautiful baritone voice that he routinely shares 
within our community. And today he's brought his three daughters who also share that tremendous gift of music and song. So David. Very good, very nice as usual. Thank you very much. Next on the program is just some introduction of some special guests. Uh, I just want to recognize my two colleagues in the legislature are up here today as well, Representative Vonnie Peach and Wes Belter. I'm pleased that you could come and make it. I know that they have served with the governor in at least Wes in a legislative capacity as well as all of us as Lieutenant Governor too, so long-standing friends. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> also, the two previous living governors were asked to come, but for good reason, uh, weren't able to. But we do have a special guest in Governor Sinner's sister. Uh, Mrs. Bressenhan is with us today as well, so she's seated on the Governor Sinner's bench today. And But both of them sent Governor's Guy and Sinner sent a letter and asked it to be read at this ceremony. And I will uh, read the one from Governor Guy. G Governor Guy lives in Fargo. He will be 92 at the end of this month. So he thought it would be better if he stayed home today, but he wishes well through his letter here that I'd like to read. And it says, dear friends, Congratulations to the city of Castleton and Governor Dalrymple. Jean and I regret that we can't join you today in this wonderful occasion. Castleton has really had an impact on the state of North Dakota. No other town can boast providing five governors for our state. Each governor left his own unique stamp on this great place we call home. 
each governor has left North Dakota in a better place at the end of his public service. And each governor has been proud to call Castleton their home. Castleton is a community gifted with rich soil that grows abundant crops year after year. It is a community with rich values that grows children who take those values to public service in adulthood. The entire community should be proud of on this day and hopefully, hopefully we'll, we will dedicate a sixth bench, yet another governor from Castleton someday. Sincerely, William L. Guy and Jean Guy, governor of North Dakota, 1961 to 1973. Very nice and appropriately written letter for today. And the nephew of Governor George Sinner is here to share the letter that he has written, Bernie Sinner. Thank you. Maybe because we grew up as neighbors, Bud's comments are a little more informal today. He says, Jack and Betsy, you continue to demonstrate to all the people of the state and to many people outside of the state the image of a leader who wants to, be, who wants to do more than hold the office of governor. You are both, day after day, showing that you are committed to doing the job of governor. The people of Castleton are especially proud of you for that attitude. We are in a time when many, many other elected officials in this country seem intent only on partisan gain. You always rise above that. And we are all proud to claim you as our governor, our governor from Castleton. We wish you Godspeed in your work. Respectfully, Bud and Jane Sinner. Thank you, Bernie. Also, we want to recognize Ed McConnell and ask him to give a few remarks. The mayor of our community for a dozen years at least, sometimes not an always easy, an easy job, even in a growing community like this. There's a lot of things to take care of. But Ed, would you please make some comments for us today? Thank you. Good afternoon. It's really an uh, honor and a privilege to see everybody here this afternoon and, and uh, taking time out of your busy days to come and enjoy the beautiful weather and, and uh, welcome Jack and Betsy home. And uh, it, uh, I guess Kenny told me not to talk too long, so I'm not going to talk too long. But the, uh, the, the thought that struck me was, was pride. You know, a lot of times us North Dakotans are... are uh, told that you know we, we're Norwegian heritage and that type of thing so we don't really show our pride we don't always brag about our state the way we should and uh, I think I even had a minister somewhere along the way that that told me that too much pride is, is, is not good for you but uh, um, I can't think of a time where I haven't been as proud of Castle as I am now um, it's uh, it, you know, I guess I grew up here, I went to school here, and, and uh, I knew it was a great place to live. Nobody, nobody really, kind of a secret, but uh, uh, it's uh, just, just proof positive of uh, how, what kind of an education, what kind of people, and, and uh, um, Castleton can boast as, their, as members. And, and uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and uh, I don't think it's wrong to be proud of Castleton. Thank you, Mayor. One other special guest we have up here today is the tenured legislator from Cass County, Hank Weber. Hank served in the legislature probably with some of these previous governors from Castleton as well, so we're pleased that he's here as well. Thank you, Ed. The Governor's Park Committee, I told the uh, Mr. Castleton, uh, Ken Hobbiger, I wouldn't really call on him, but he and others have put this event together, so we're pleased and thankful that they could do that. And the brick and the bricks and the stone we're standing on really are the people that helped build this park. The names engraved on the bricks here contributed significantly to the way this park is today, and we thank them as well. Uh, is Steve here? Steve Lorenzen? 
Steve has a big volleyball tournament going on up the school and he wasn't sure that he could get here on time. So we'll move along and uh, recognize that the school, as we heard in Governor Guy's remarks, growing values in our community has been a real part of that. Steve has been a longtime principal here back to the time when the first lady, Betsy Dalrymple, and I were on the school board and we enjoyed working with him back then. Just to make a few comments about our governor before he comes to introduce himself and make some remarks, I thought uh, Governor Guy's comments were very important. Anyone who's grown up in this town or has been here very long certainly has recognized the rich agricultural heritage of this area as well as the storied political history that we enjoy. And our, and our governor today, Governor Dalrymple and his, and the First Lady Betsy have, I would say, traveled those, both of those roads in a very distinguished and sex, successful way. They really have. You know, starting from a farm about a mile out of town here, Jack grew up, and I heard him say at his State of the State address in December, how we really valued the education he got in little Carl Ben Eilson that was used to be standing on the probably about the ninth hole of the current golf course and had some real matriarchs of teachers that laid the foundation for what much of what's he th what he thinks about education today. Many of you of my generation and Jack's have probably had some of those teachers as well. Miss Esther Labuth and Laura Port. Some real long standing Excellent, excellent educators from our community, where Jack began. When he came back from college, he began to operate and manage the farm operation. Still does that today from an office here in town. I saw him heading up there this morning with a bunch of papers under his arms. So he tries to do that job as well. I would expect he's doing that very capably too, but I know he has a good group of people out there. So it's nice that he stays involved here. You know, a number of years ago, when he and I were a little bit younger, we were a part of a, a really pretty good softball team, the Red Baron. We won a lot of games, and we played well. And Jack was a real contributor to that team. He hit a long ball. But you know, for him, for some reason, the distance between the bases always seemed to be a lot longer than for the rest of us. And I'm not quite sure why that was, but it just took a little longer to get around. But he hit the long ball with vision and expecting he would get around the bases. And we enjoyed that time together and enjoyed that experience back in our community and able to utilize some of these park services that are here today. You know, and I think he took that long ball vision with him to the legislator, to the legislature. As a young legislator, he came back to the community club here in Castleton in 1985 about and asked if they would be interested in a recreational leadership grant program that was available, that he would try, try to secure some funds to help recreational activities grow in our community. They said, of course, and he said, I will get the money. Secured a three-year grant for this community to build its park and recreational leadership that it has today. If you've been around this community, you will see not only this park, but the three others who offer that offer just a great number of service uh, activities and services within our community, one that many other communities larger than ours are envious of. He did a great job in just kicking off that campaign and setting a vision for those who were to follow and do the work and provide leadership from then on. Many, many hours of volunteerism were included in that. And as Lieutenant Governor, I think he took that same bat along with him. Much of the policy that came out of Governor Hovind's administration in ag, in trade, and education had Governor Dalrymple's fingerprints all over it. Setting some long vision and good policy in those three arenas at least as he was Lieutenant Governor. 
And today we welcome him as our governor, the fifth governor from Castleton. You know, it's an amazing statistic to me. He's the 32nd governor of our state, and one out of every six of those 32 have come from right here in our community of Castleton. That's an amazing statistic that I think we need to be proud of and why we're here today to recognize that event. And with that, I'd like to introduce Governor Jack Dalrymple and his wife, Betsy. Gary, thank you very much. Betsy, come, uh, why don't you come stand closer to me here. Thanks very much, Gary, for the really nice introduction and uh, thanks for all of the preparations that you've uh, made here today to do this and thank you for coming on a beautiful Saturday afternoon when I'm sure you could have thought of a couple other things to do instead. Uh, it's nice of you to come by and, and uh, be part of this. It's, it's very humbling for, for both of us. Uh, we've cared about Castleton for a long, long time and uh, this, this means something because you can get plaques and you can get awards, but uh, not everybody gets to be in the governor's park. And uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll always remember this moment. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just acknowledge a few. Uh, Gary, thanks so much for, for helping organize this. Uh, Wes and Judy, uh, I tell you, this is kind of like uh, uh, getting to the, late, the later chapters of the story, isn't it? Uh, Wes and I started uh, working on public service back in 1984, and uh, we're still at it today. Vonnie, thank you very much for being here. It's been great working with you. Uh, Hank, thank you for coming. Uh, in 1984, uh, when Wes and I were first elected to the House of Representatives, uh, the outgoing member was Hank Weber. I remember thinking at the time, uh, this guy served 16 years in the House of Representatives. That just seemed like an eternity to me. I couldn't imagine anybody wanting to be that long in the, in the legislature. And look what we did. Same thing. So, uh, you know, you were right and I was wrong. Ed and Janet, thank you for representing Castleton here today. Really appreciate it. Ellery and Jean, uh, Good to see you on the center bench there. And uh, I, I, I've got to recall a few things about uh, our past, my past uh, here in Castleton. This really is our hometown, always has been. Uh, I've had people ask me, well, how long have you been in North Dakota? You know, and, and, and like there must be more to the story. And I have to explain to them that this is where uh, we've been as a family since 1880, uh, 1875 to be exact, and the house was built in 1880. Um, I've never been a resident of any other community in my life. I've never had a driver's license from any state other than North Dakota. Uh, in fact, I remember getting my driver's license uh, out in our driveway at the farm one day when I was about 13 years old. And, uh, you know, it's just an incredible place, really, uh, to grow up and to be from. And uh, I remember Ellery uh, and Bud teaching us to play football and baseball out at the center farm. And uh, you taught us that uh, if you put a little mud on your fingertips, you could hold the ball better. Remember that? And Bud Sinner taught me that if you were going to throw rocks, you needed one just the right size. I'll wait a minute here. Okay, I, uh, I better hurry up here before the next one comes. Uh, could, could be a short time in between. Bernie, good to see you here today. Thanks for coming. Uh, Bernie was just the little baby of the family, of course. Uh, in the days when I went to the center farm to play, I did go to Carl Ben Eilson School. Uh, that uh, fire escape was the scariest thing I'd ever uh, been in in my life. I remember Miss Port and Miss Labuse. I uh, had no idea what good teachers they were until later in life. But we've had a lot of great teachers uh, in the Castleton schools over a long period of time. My classmates were 
Dick Sinner, uh, Denny Rademacher, a big family north of town. Billy Roden's dad ran the drugstore. And uh, Mike King's dad ran the Dairy Queen. And, uh, you know, those, those folks uh, stuck around for quite a while. And uh, still uh, run into people every day who, who came from town. Donnie Larson, I remember uh, they said today to gather in the uh, office park. And I said, where's that? And they said, you know, the old Federated store. And, of course, I immediately knew where to go. Uh, and, you know, Donnie, uh, I remember when you uh, used to take care of everybody for, for a long, long time. Uh-oh, too long standing up straight, sorry. When I grew up on the farm, we used to have to haul water to the farm. The water was brought out by uh, Bert Kent. One day his water truck died on the farm and couldn't be started again, and I think it's still out there in the trees someplace. But uh, I remember that so well, Bill, and then uh, later got to know you better. Tell you what, this, this community uh, is really a fantastic community. And people come up to me every day and they say, what is the deal, anyhow, with Castleton? Five governors? you got to be kidding me. Uh, is there some kind of course down there or something? Or what do you, what, where do, how does this all get going? And I said, I have no way of really explaining it because we didn't necessarily uh, have the same point of view politically or really have any uh, direct connection to each other. Uh, but this community has always generated people who were interested in building and having a strong community and making the world a better place. And uh, sometimes I think we just do that and we don't realize that other people consider it uh, a form of leadership. I'm very proud to be part of this group. Andrew Burke uh, was here at the time that uh, my great-grandfather, Oliver Dalrymple, was in the area. Uh, he had to have been here, I believe uh, he was the mayor, was he not, Ed, of Castleton at one time. Came to Dakota Territory originally, I believe, on an orphan train. And when he was the mayor, uh, Oliver Dalrymple was building our house outside of town. And I've got to think that he probably was well aware of that uh, building project out there and probably even came out to check on it a couple of times, see how things were going. And while Bill Langer is probably the most famous governor we've ever had, and people will remember him and Castleton forever just because of the things that he did, and uh, I always thought it was kind of interesting that he had two different administrations uh, separated in time by uh, a stay in the penitentiary. Uh, and then Bill Guy came along, was said by many people to be the first modern governor of North Dakota, instituted a lot of important programs uh, for the first time, uh, served uh, for 12 years longest serving uh, governor. Uh, John Hoven would have tied him if he'd uh, you know, stuck around, but I think he, he turned the office over to me like uh, one month too early and uh, uh, came up a couple days short. But, uh, you know, also one of the governors that will go down in history, uh, probably one of the most uh, progressive, uh, change-oriented governors uh, in our state history. And finally, you know, Bud Sinner, who was my next door neighbor, I remember as a young guy uh, bumping into Bud out on the back roads and we would talk uh, from pickup window to pickup window about everything that was wrong with the world and, uh, you know, had some really good discussions. Never crossed my mind that uh, he would become governor, uh, much less me. So it's been great to see him again and talk to him a little bit at times about some of the things that he went through. So here we are today. Thank you so much. We're, we're really uh, proud to be from Castleton. Very humbled to be part of this very distinguished group. And to those of you who have helped us along the way, uh, Wes, Gary, and all of our old friends, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it, it would not have been possible for us to live the interesting life that we have if we hadn't had the 
great support of a home community like Castleton. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack, for those remarks. Just a couple things left. We're going to unveil the bench um, that is made for him. I just want you to know, too, it looks a little bit different than the others. That's by design today. The one that will be permanently put in place is not here yet. And I have to give a shout out to John Carley. I saw him over there somewhere. But uh, he scrambled real hard yesterday. There he is. Yesterday putting this thing together very professionally, well done, uh, and I think you'll be pleased to see it. But thank you, John, for getting it here, putting it together, and making it work for us today. The permanent one will be here in a short period of time. Uh, we're going to do that. Then we're going to have the benediction, because the tree planting will be at the other end of the park. Well, first of all, I think I'll have, after after the unveiling, I'll have uh, Bill Carlson come up and just tell about what the tree planting is going to do, and then we'll have the benediction. But if Bernie would help me move this out of the way, and then we'll have the unveiling here. Thank you. If we could have the uh, governor and the first lady come up so that we can, we can have uh, the bench with the Dalrymple, Dalrymple name and biography on it. We would like them to uncover it for us. Go ahead, whenever you're ready. Better take the rock off. Well, thank you. Our two uh, top foresters are here, Bill and, and Donnie Larson, the long-standing tree planter who really made an arboretum out at the governor's park, or out at uh, the reservoir park. Uh, if you want to go out and see a lot of trees that will grow in this area, they're all marked, so you can see them out there. But Bill Carlson, today's forester, just will explain the tree planting and how that's going to work. Yeah, my name is Bill Carlson. I've been a Castleton City Forester for many years. And uh, first of all, I want to apologize for my dress. Uh, the problem is, is if you're the guy that gets to organize a tree planting, you also get to dig the hole. So <laughs> you don't want to be too dressed up. I did want to tell you a little bit about how we selected the tree. And if you look up and down Governor's Park, what you'll find is there's not one American elm in the entire park. And uh, as we all know, the North Dakota State tree is the American elm. Well, in the last few years, there have been many American elms uh, selected that are actually resistant to Dutch elm disease. And so we want to get back to uh, planting American elm. Now, I do have a problem with this elm, and I didn't realize it until I read uh, the article in The Reporter. And that is, is uh, with uh, Governor Dalrymple graduating from Yale, uh, this tree was actually selected from Princeton. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's actually a Princeton American Elm. And uh, uh, so we're going to go, uh, uh, go to the other end of the uh, Governor's Park and get that planted. And I'd love to have you help, uh, if you would. Yeah. And uh, a little bit, it took me a long time to find a spot for the tree. And that is a problem when you have five governors, is uh, there's nowhere to put another tree. But we did find a spot. And it's a really good spot. So uh, thank you. And uh, we'll uh, move down to the other end and get the tree planted. Thank you, Bill. Before we do that, uh, we'll ask uh, Pastor Karsgaard to give a benediction, and then we can move down to the far end of the park and conclude our services. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>